Well, good morning, Emmanuel. I'm here among the trees, uh, which is actually kind of funny because we didn't think of this ahead of time. But um, I just finished reading a book, and in the book it was talking about uh, another book that I haven't read. So this is a little dangerous uh, because I don't know what's in the other book, but it was uh, a book titled The Hidden Life of Trees. Um, and now I will admit I did go Google, and I'm a little skeptical on the whole story, but apparently a researcher in uh, Germany who has been a forester has written a book called The Hidden Life of Trees, and in it he sort of has researched and documented the amazing ways trees are interconnected and communicate through the root systems and all these kind of things. Um, and it it's quite fascinating stuff. I might actually go get the book and read it sometime. But but kind of the moral of the story in the book I was reading was just talking about that as an analogy to the the interconnectedness of the church and how we are woven together. And I wanted to share a thought for today along those lines because in John chapter 10, Jesus has spoken with those who are listening about the fact that he's the good shepherd, um, a very well-known passage. And then just a few verses later, it's a separate sort of scene in John 10, a separate time, but it's this passage where um, the people come to Jesus and they're asking him very pointedly, are you the Christ? Are you the one? And Jesus gives this reply, I told you and you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name bear witness about me, but you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them, in, given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. And then this really important verse, I and the Father are one. Now it's right after that that the Jewish people pick up stones to, to execute Jesus and they, they clearly indicate that the reason they're doing it is because of this claim to be God, this connection he is claiming with God. Um, and Jesus, a few verses later, continues to respond to that and it's sort of a, a bit of a funny response because he's not trying to clear up a misunderstanding of his claim. Uh, I think. It, it, the implication is they got it right. They understand exactly what he's claimed. He's trying to clear up a, a, a problem with their, their willful rejection in their hearts of that claim. Um, but it's really that, that statement, I and the Father are one, that I find just sort of intriguing because then Jesus picks up that same statement in his high priestly prayer seven chapters later in John 17. And he prays in that prayer for us uh, down in verse 20 and 21. And here's what he says. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they may be in us, so the world may believe that you have sent me. I, I find myself putting the emphasis on the statement that they may be in us. In other words, it's easy to apply John 17, verse 21, as a verse that's saying we need to be connected to to Christ and to God through Christ, but there is just as much emphasis on that first part of that statement, which is a very interesting statement when Jesus says, I want them to be one just as you, Father, are in me and I in you. In other words, Jesus is saying, Father, you and I are one, just like he said back in chapter 10, but now I want our people, my people, to be one in a similar sort of way. Now that is... A massive statement, um, one that I don't think any of us probably can fully fathom, maybe we'll never fully understand until we're in glory and uh, able to understand more fully. But, but the implication certainly is that, that the people of God are to be unified together. And you see that all through the rest of the New Testament. You see it in places like Acts, where the church is together. You see it in Acts 9, where Saul has persecuted the church and then come to faith, and he's had that conversation with Christ and and Jesus really says you know Saul why are you persecuting me and yet Saul isn't directly persecuting Jesus he's persecuting the people of Jesus and so you see this interconnectedness of Jesus and his people but also of the people of Christ together in places like Ephesians 2 and that's my thought for the day Emmanuel have you been wrestling that out in your own heart I think there's something in our culture that strives for independence uh, I, I know I do, 
Uh, I suspect I'm not alone in that. Um, and yet we see part of being the people of God is not being reconciled just to God, but also to God's people, that we are to be one just as Christ and his Father are one. So I suspect we need to pray for this, that we need to, to work hard of understanding what this means and trying to live it out, trying to resist the, the pressures of our world that, that push in a different direction. So I'm going to pray for us now, and then I'm going to trust that you have a great rest of this day. Father, thank you for the fact that Jesus Christ is God, that our Savior and Lord is unified with you, is one with you. And we praise you and worship you for that. And Father, we read this incredible challenge in John 17, 21, that we are to be one, that somehow that is to mirror the oneness that you would have with your Son. And we pray that you would help us to understand that, to live that out. Because, Father, we know from that same verse that the ultimate end is not just unity. It's not just that they would be one for the sake of being unified, but, Father, that we would be one for the sake of bearing witness to you, to our world. And so we understand that, that the salvation of men and women and young people rests in the unity of your people. So help us to do that well, especially in this time. And, Father, that's what's brought my thoughts to this very this very thing is how we are unified when we are separated in so many ways. So give us wisdom and creativity and love for one another, we ask in Christ's name. Amen.